Good morning, everyone. Welcome to crazy barking, dog barking morning at Cambodia today. The dog's gonna start barking. I started kind of recording a little later than normal. Uh, three, four in the morning, they don't bark. They're sleeping, but now they're fully awake and barking. But nevertheless, our daily gospel goes on in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Yes, Jesus, come, touch us, fill us, speak to us, that we may live victoriously today, Lord. Just like this Samaritan woman, nameless woman, <laughs> the last 2,000 years has testified that you are Christ. Yes, you are Messiah, you are Lord, you are our Master. Help us, O God, in Jesus' name. Well, this is word of the Lord from Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 27 and forward. Just then his disciples returned, were surprised to find him talking with the woman. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking to her? <laughs> Jesus, come on. You know who she is. Why are you talking to her? Embarrassing. Jews, don't do that, sir. Rabbis, don't do that, surely. Defile your bodies like that. Defile your image. Talking to her. Then, verse 28, then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Wow. 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 Amazing story. Mm. Great coffee. What's happening here? What's happening here is that Samaritan woman realized that Jesus is Christ. The man that he's talking to is the Messiah. She then leave her water jar behind and went back. I mean, it should be read, ran back. She just immediately, as soon as she found out that who Jesus is, she didn't wait, didn't go to seminary, have to go through four years of cemetery, I mean, seminary, and have a systematic theology about Christology, you know, as, and then learn the Greeks and Hebrew. No, no, no. Didn't take four years of training. Immediately. Do you have this immediacy about your faith in Christ? Or do you always like listen to the devil and say, oh, you know, I need more education. I need more training. Oh, I need seminary. Oh, I need my MDiv, DME, and PhD. I'm not knocking my, my training. No, I mean, you need it. Because your calling is different, right? Unless you're called to teach, preach at seminary level and talk about different theology and what is appropriate, how to do self-theology in the Cambodian context, then you need to study philosophy. Well, I need it, because that's my call. But is that your call? Or are you listening to the temptation of the devil that says, oh, you need more education in order to share that Jesus. No, it's immediate. When you encounter Jesus, turn around, run, run to people that you hate it. People who hate you, your enemies. An average Joe who doesn't really care about you, but still listen to your rumors and false rumors and real rumors and, <laughs> you know. The thing is that she left her jar behind at the feet of Jesus. Wow. Now, I am not, I'm not for allegorical interpretation of the Bible. No, far from it. But here, just re re approaching from a literature perspective, Bible as a literature. Have you ever taken a course like that? I did. At my college years, I took a Bible as a literature course because they are approaching the entire Bible. Uh, not as word of God, not as 
religious text. I took a whole course, 20 weeks, Bible as a literature. It was fabulous, incredible. They're reading the book of Psalms, right? Psalm 23rd as a poetry, not as a praise. Uh, the Hebrew, they, they said that out of the entire literature of last 2000 years or at, at, when, whenever the written words are written, most grammatically correct sentence in the entire human history, according to that professor. And I don't think he was a Christian. It is when God introduced himself to Moses, Lord, God, whom should I set has sent me? And Lord said, I am that I am, right? I am that I am is the most grammatically perfect sentence in English literature. Wow. So even, so if I'm approaching that way, when this Samaritan woman leaves a jar behind at the feet of Jesus and runs, what's happening? Several things. What's in the jar? Water. For who? The Messiah. Jesus. For you asking for water. You being a Jew and I being a Samaritan, right? Nasty attitude. Change to sir, give me the spring water. Now she leaves the jar full of water. For who? Jesus and runs into the and and Apostle John, who meditate on the events that he experienced with Jesus for 50 plus years, want to make sure that that is written because the jar symbolized something very profound. You see, 2000 years ago, archaeologists will find findings, proofs that the jar was made very special for specially to draw water from the well and carry it to their home. The most pot, pottery are made thick for durability. Because you know, you don't want, you know, hit something and crack. So it's quite it's like chanto. It's like where you make kimchi in Korea or put jinjang in Korea, there's very thick, you know, at least like inch. Very thick, very durable. But this particular jar, especially for women, will be made out of thin layers of clay and you know, fashioned differently, maybe put a handle. But this jar, what potters do is that make it as thin as possible, right? And of course you dry it and then put color, put the cover, coating, and then you kill it, right? You put it in the kill and then, you know, fire it, fire it out. And then becomes what? A, a, a jar, <laughs> a final product. But no, this particular jar, what they do is they bring it to a certain height, drop it at a certain angle. So crack, it will crack, not shatters to, you know, a thousand pieces. It cracks to maybe 15, 20 pieces. With that, they re they glue it with another clay, you know, softer clay, glue it, put it together in a shape, and then fire it up again with different coating, different, and maybe put a design. And then once it comes out, they wire it with the thin wires, they wire the whole thing. I mean, they find these kind of jars 2000 years ago, especially in the area. Why? Because that jar now is very light, Comparatively speaking, it's no plastic bag, plastic. <laughs> they didn't have plastic then, right? So comparatively, comparatively speaking, it's the lightest jar possible for a woman to carry. Because now you have to put two, three gallons of water there. You got to carry it over your head. But this one, when you bump into things, you will not crack. Because every clay jar has like a fault line. The, the weak point has been broken already, mended, fired up again. So when you hit, or when you drop it from a short distance, you will not cry. To Samaritan woman, there was her self-image, broken jar, broken jar. And now she is serving the Lord 
quenching his thirst. But she left her image, who she is, who she has been all these years, married five times, living with someone. You know, and it could, it's not just a sexual thing, you know. It, it could be a drug addict who lived a life of drug addiction or gambling addiction, or wife beater, or, you know, emotionally unstable, or just, you know, whatever sin that you, your self-image you have, she left it at the feet of Jesus and runs to the very town full of people who's been ru spreading rumors about her, all of it, most of it true, some of the exaggeration, you know. And she's going to face them, face them and says, hey, listen, come and meet this Jesus. Could he be Messiah that we've been waiting for? First point is that there's immediacy about her obedience and sharing Christ. You don't need education. You don't need systematic theology. You don't need any of that. You just turn around, immediately obey. Second, you leave behind your self-image at the feet of Jesus. He will take care of that. Third, face, face. Don't, don't run away of your problem that have immobilized you all these years. Fourth, for the last 2,000 years, we don't know her name. She was nameless, just some right time moment. Yeah. Oh yeah, the California girl. <laughs> Says a lot. Yeah, you know, the LA lady. <laughs> oh, you'll be like, oh, it's more like, yeah, you know, the Cerritos lady. Woman of Cerritos, wow. My goodness. There's a power when you say, come and see. You don't need degree, you don't need education, you need certification. Okay, I'll just certify you if you need certification. Repeat after me, come and see. That's it, you're not certified. Come and see what? Meet Jesus that I met. How can anybody refute that? It's your testimony. It's you. You put your integrity online. And then you know what they saw? Of course, the people saw the change in her face. You know, she's bluntly, openly talk about her sin. It's like, oh, everything that I had ever done, yeah, I live with five guys. And you know, John, John, Scott, Steve, Luke, Matthew. <laughs> and you know, this uh, Mike, Luke, Bob, Robert is not even my husband. And he go, wait, that's what we trash talking about you. Why are you talking that you you sharing that yourself? You know, you know that I'm a white beater, you know that I'm a gambler, you know that I was drug addict, you know I'm alcoholic, you know who I am. But I met Jesus. Could it be Messiah? Come and see. Wow power but he was nameless i just finished 14 day quarantine and stuff that i went through you know i start posting like oh i'm going through 14 day quarantine and the chancellor of the you know one of the large seminary here you know he's coming now back and he's writing to me personally hey you know what about this what about this asking for my opinion what because they cannot, I don't care what kind of education ground, you know, uh, it, the testimony that I have, the experience that I have, who wants going to refute that? Who wants going to refute your experience with Jesus? That's yours. And for the last 2,000 years, this lady in Cerritos, lady in Samaria, lady in Sikhar, a <laughs> town called Whiskey, a lady from the town called Whiskey, yeah, the, you know, the whole region, yeah. The, the LA lady, yeah, the LA lady who met Jesus, nameless. I'm going through an interesting time these days. This morning, I got an email from Amazon saying that they're gonna pull all my books out because, and all this time I thought I got, my account was shut down or they threatened to shut down my account because uh, I've been publishing Korean books. No, no, no. I just found out today that I published my prayer-driven life in Indonesian and Japanese. 
and I don't have copyright. But I, I do, that's my book, right? Because I did not formally gave copyright to any of them. But now they shut me down and I just checked amazon.com. None of my books are posted. That's kind of sad. But 14 days of watching the sunrise, brand new day, my meditation was, wow, behold, everything has become new. And maybe God is doing something. So I don't know, I gotta figure out. But, and so it's okay. You know, people say, oh, you'll be so devastated. No, no, no. God wants it, God does it. If God, don't fight God, just move on. Because every phase of my life, God does something. And I need to accept and move on. So what it is, what is it, Lord? You know, what do I do now? <laughs> It'll be interesting to see, find out. But to be nameless, it's okay. Nobody cares. I don't care. Right? As long as I have testimony that Jesus I met is Messiah. He's God. He's my Lord. Every day I will commit my loyalty to him and serve him. Amen. So Holy Spirit, God, come, teach us, show us that we may live for you and for your kingdom. That your name shall be exalted, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that you are God and that is enough, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Mwah.